Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Artcasters number 202. And I've got an old friend on that I haven't really talked to in a while, so this should be a good show. Uh, Jay Ferguson is with us. Uh, we'll get to Jay in just a minute, but uh, I just want to let everyone know. Number 200 and... Is that you, Jay, or is that me? And I've got an old friend on that I can learn. Not right. me. It's not you? Okay, it's, it's gone. It seems like it's gone now. Okay. Weird. Uh, yeah, it might have been a YouTube in the background. So I just want to let everyone know that Josh is sick today, so it's just going to be it's just going to be me and Jay uh, tonight. But like I said, we, uh, we go way back, so we'll probably have plenty to discuss. Um, but uh, but yeah, so la like last last week we didn't have a, a guest, and today we've got a guest, but only one host. So it's so <laughs> it, but it is, this isn't the normal format. We'll go back to the three person format soon. Um, but anyway, so hopefully Josh will be back and, and, and well again and everything for the next episode. Um, as usual, I mean, you're on my channel, so you know who I am. Uh, and then as far as anything I have to promote today, um, of course, you can find me at CircWorks Art Labs or CircWorks.com, uh, CircWorks on most of social media. But if you happen to be in Arizona, uh, this Saturday, I will be at Surprise Comics. It is Halloween Comic Fest, which is kind of it's, I guess it's sort of like a, um, it's sort of like free comic book day. There will be free comics there. Um, uh, but you know, it's, it's, you know, come in costume and everything. So it's kind of, sounds like kind of a cool event. I'll be there doing sketches. Um, and we will have copies of the, um, uh, 100s anthology, uh, werewolves and unicorns and also, uh, Abel Parsons, AKA Abe Sapien will be there. Uh, we're both featured in the, uh, in that anthology. It's kind of, Interesting because he's the first story in the in the anthology. I'm the last, so you can kind of come and you can get the book in signed. Um, and if you already have a copy, bring it down. We can sign that too. So that's from eleven to five. Uh, Surprise Comics. Um, it's on my it's on my Facebook page if you want to find out the information and everything. But uh, yeah, or you know what I would say is if uh, there's there may be a com this Halloween Comic Fest in your area. It's not just uh, specific to this store. So if you're in a different place, go check it out. And if you are in Arizona, uh, apparently there's this other guy, uh, doing a signing, uh, McFarlane or something like that. Um, but, but he's, <laughs> he's doing it at a, at a movie theater and you want to support your local comic book store. So come out and see me <laughs> so, anyway, but, uh, on to our guests, uh, Jay Ferguson, who is just an incredible airbrush artist. If you, if you are familiar with his work, definitely got to check it out. Um, how's it going, Jay? Very good, very good. It's been a long time. <laughs> you got anything that you want to promote right off the bat? Uh, um, what do I want to promote? Uh, if you're in the uh, LA area, I have a gallery show going on right now at Copro Gallery. Uh, that goes until November November second, I believe. So you still got like two weeks to catch a show if you if you're in around the the California area. Do you ever, are you going to make it down at any point of the show's run or? Uh, one day eventually. For this show, no, no. Okay. I, uh, one so day out in California, but not, not this show. Yeah. So you probably, so I'm guessing you do, you do quite a few shows then? You do gallery shows or? Yeah. The, um, I'm doing about four or five a year. Awesome. Awesome. Right now, this is the, like this is my first solo show at that gallery, but I've done, this is actually the one to the fourth time that I've shown there. The rest were with group shows, but yeah, this one I got like the, I have what, 12 paintings showing right now for my own showcase. So, so how does that work? Cause you do a lot of, I mean, you do a lot of commission stuff or you used to, I assume you still do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do you create work specifically for these gallery shows or is this just personal work or how does that work? How does that? Um, with me, it's just, well, I think with a lot of artists, it's just kind of, it'd be the regular thing that I would paint any given day of the week anyways. Yeah. Like I, if you're familiar with my style, you know, like everything I do really does have a very certain kind of look to it. If you're not familiar with it, then if you if you were to see my body of work, I think you could put any painting I've done like today from five years ago into a show and it would all meld together like very easily. Yeah, yeah. With the exception of, you know, like comic book characters, but I'm not gonna put that in a gallery. 
Right. Well, I was just kind of curious, like how much of like of your work, how much of your work are you doing for like, I just assume that you you do a lot of commission stuff and then that gets sold. So how much of, I mean, or do you just have a, do you do a lot of personal work? Do you have stuff lying around that you feature? Or I know you've done stuff for, you've got, you've got at least one art book, I assume, or you've got. No, I haven't done an art book. Oh, you haven't. Because you were, I know you were talking about doing one. I've been on forever, but yeah. it hasn't happened. Okay. Well, just, you know, I, this probably might not be the best repre representation of Jay's work because his stuff, I mean, especially if you're into Halloween and he does a lot of stuff that, you know, is perfect for around this time. This, this isn't, this is my, this is my piece that Jay did for me. Let me oh, show wow. you this. You remember this? Yeah. So this is Jim Henson. And uh, so that's Jay. This is not a photograph. If you've seen my studio tour, you've probably seen that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, he's just, I mean, that pretty much speaks for itself. So, I mean, Jay's work is kind of what I would call shut up and take my money good, where you just see it and it's like, you know. So, I mean, I know we want to talk about, I know we want to get into, uh, you know, selling your art and marketing your art. Um, so, I mean, again, when, you're, when your work is at the point Jay's is, it's, 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 it's almost like, it seems like it, it's super easy, but I'm, I'm, you know, there's got to be more to it than just having great art, correct, Jay? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of, uh, you can have the greatest art in the world, but if people don't see it, you're not going to sell it. Right. And, you know, getting eyes on it is really the hardest part of the game, I think, for any artist out there, period. So a lot of networking, hitting social media really hard, like Facebook, I have a base on Facebook, uh, but my main hub is Instagram. Yeah. Like just constantly putting out stuff on Instagram. And uh, along with that, it, I've been very fortunate to have been featured on a lot of art pages and like really big pages on yeah. Instagram are always kind of sharing my work. So that gets eyes on my work. And the more people that see it, the more work I get out of it. Like I get, most of my sales through my web store, like I have an analytic tracker that says where the traffic's coming from. And I'd say about 95% of it is all coming from Instagram. That's really good. Cause I've heard, I've heard from a lot of people that just Instagram doesn't convert very well, but I think, I mean, obviously you've got the, you've got enough followers where you've got, you've, you can make links, right? Where you can yeah. just link out to your store and everything like that. I, I can, but I actually don't. I I, okay. I I rarely do. I like I have the uh, on my Instagram page. You, you can have the one link. I have it to my store, and that's okay. it. So like that's I, everyone, I mean, even I've got that. So yeah, uh, if I make a post, I'll just say you know, like I if I did a piece and I want to sell it just for the hell of it, I'll say you know, just did this today. It's going for sale at nine o'clock tonight. Use the link in my bio, or if I put it in my story, I'll just say you know, this is up for grabs. Check out my bio. That's all I ever do. I don't actually directly link anything. Okay. Okay. But again, I think, I think when you look at, when you look at your, your work, it's kind of like, I think people will seek it out. Like, you know, cause I mean, really, I mean, without I'm shoveling too much praise on you. I mean, that's like, right. I mean, your work is right up here in my, it's like one of my prized possessions. I mean, every, when I come to, I mean, I've got, I've got, I don't have a lot of original art, but I've got three pieces and one of them is yours. So it's, um, Thank and I think a lot of people would just want, you know, want a piece of that. So, um, so beyond Instagram, um, I mean, is that pretty much, do you just kind of rely on Instagram or what, what other ways do you, what other, you know, tactics do you, or, you know, what do you use to get your, get the word out and everything? Uh, for marketing, I, I've been really fortunate. Like Instagram for me, it, it exploded pretty much right out of the gate when I first got onto it. Um, but I've been very fortunate with the companies I've, I've done work with, like whether it be Sullen or Dynamite Comics. They're like they push my work a lot too, which is huge. Like when you got a company like Sullen or Dyn any kind of company where you're dealing with a million plus followers and they're constantly pushing your work, that that pays off in spades or like yeah. uh, 
I want an airbrush. They're constantly pushing my work because <laughs> there's I want a yeah USA and then there's Iwata Brazil like they have overseas hubs and they're constantly pushing my work so like there there's eyes really all over the world seeing it is there any I mean is there I I assume there's no there's no longer like an airbrush action magazine or is there or is it online or is there anything uh, like that Air I remember that was a big one back you know yeah, there, there's still a the airbrush action, I think, is dead and gone. But there, yeah. there's a couple, like I know there's airbrush step by step. I've been in that. I've been in, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Custom Culture and Paint Magazine. There is a new airbrush magazine that came out. Like airbrush action collapsed. I think somebody bought the publishing rights to it. And it's the same magazine. I think it's just under a different name, but there, there, that is still around. But yeah, I think there's about three or four airbrush magazines, and I've been in three out of the four. So. Yeah, that's right. But even for that, like even to get into the magazine, that that's just more uh, personal praise to myself to say, yeah, I was an airbrush magazine because it for sales wise, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of figured like that. Like you, so. you, you're not going to make money selling to the people in the trade. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. So, uh, th and that's one thing that a, a lot of comic artists kind of find that they, you know, or where a lot of times it seems like they're just marketing to other comic book artists. But um, yeah, which is the thing, you know, like yeah. it, 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 that's a big stumbling block, and I see so many people do it, and I, I'm, I can be guilty of that myself. Like when I first started, like for people that don't know, I spent pretty much 20 years of my life in in the custom motorcycle world doing murals on choppers and bikes and whatnot and then i kind of got myself out of that and i went into the fine art world so when i first came into the wanted to dedicate all my time to the fine art world i was kind of marketing a lot of my stuff without even knowing it to the art community itself just completely by accident and then once i kind of figured got it through my head it's like you know i'm, I'm catering to the whole wrong audience like right. it's nice to get praise from from artists and people saying, oh, wow, you're great at what you do, but financially that doesn't help you at all. So you got to start marketing to the galleries, to the collectors, like even things as simple as a hashtag, like for you to put a hashtag like uh, artist or I, I shouldn't say artist, that's actually a fair tag to use. But if you're going to sit there and put like pencils and markers as a hashtag, it, it does absolutely nothing for you because the only people looking up those hashtags are artists, see, not art collectors. See, that's kind of curious because one of the things is I'm doing Inktober right now, and I have been, and I'm doing these. Uh, it's like, let's see, it's kind of like, black, like white on black. These yeah. sketches for Inktober. So, um, but I've been tagging like the jelly roll pens just because you know I figured you know who knows maybe as you were talking about companies. Uh, with large followers so you know if if the manufacturer of those pins maybe sees it uh maybe likes what i do you know it's maybe a brand deal or something i don't know i've heard of things like that happening but um yeah so. and it does very well happen like I, i'm i'm very guilty of that myself um there's certain well you see you were talking about iwata so i mean that's yeah you know, yeah there's with iwata or you know i like i'll tag certain art companies like strathmore or liquitex I don't do it on a regular basis, but I, I do tag them, and that has definitely paid off in spades for me. Like a lot of product coming in that they'll give to me is that's awesome. Yeah, like it's not really like an official endorsement or sponsorship. It's just a, you know, you scratch my back, we'll scratch yours right. kind of agreement. But yeah, for the most part, like it, tagging like very very art related tags, like to the tools or the materials that you're using. You just got to bear in mind that you're the only people that are going to be looking those up besides the actual manufacturer is just other artists. They're, the people that collect the art aren't going to be looking for that. Like you, like with you, you know, you'd want to be tagging like uh, manga comics, like comic related stuff, uh, fantasy gaming kind of stuff, like just to get in that kind of audience. Yeah, and people like, are actually going to be buying, like, want to buy what you're making. Yeah, that's like when I, you know, the Mad Science 
products and things that I do, that's one of the things that I really, I really need to focus on is, is marketing towards people that are in that space because that's a totally different, you know, it's a totally different market. And yeah. a lot of those people in tech or science or whatever, you know, they've got money to spend, whereas sometimes artists, not so much. You know, yeah, exactly. So. You, just, you want to target the audience like you're, you're the audience is going to buy your work. Right, right. My work, if you look at my hashtags on most of my posts, like it's all very uh, like dark, uh, I, dark, gothic, macabre, occult, witches, like just because my artwork is very dark and that's right. what it represents. But those are the people that look up those tags. Those are the collectors of the work and they're the ones that are going to spend the money on it because they're not just looking for artwork. Like if you look up the hashtag Gothic, you're going to be getting, you'll get artwork, you'll get fashion models, you'll get architecture. Yeah. Like people just looking for Gothic kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. So, so you said you, you kind of, you've moved on from, you know, the, the whole uh, cycling world and stuff like that. Um, Cause that's, I know when we were talking, that's kind of, you were knee deep in that. So you're pretty much, you've pretty much put all that behind and you've moved totally. Yeah. Into- I'm like 99% retired from it. Although yeah. So do you, really, do you cool, really high paying job? I'll still do it, but there's a lot of parameters around that. Right. Right. So do you, um, do you, do you do mostly, you know, I assume you do. I mean, I, I guess like one of the, I mean, I don't know how many people are still now with, so many you know digital products out there and techniques and things like that um the amount of people still doing traditional airbrush i would assume one of the pluses for doing traditional airbrush brushes to do it on something um you know like a motorcycle or something like that that's a little more three-dimensional so it seems like you've kind of moved into basically you know bristol and, and stuff like that for the most part right or do you still do any do you do anything um that's not kind of like just airbrush on, you know, some form of paper. Well, yeah. I mean, like material wise, like uh, I, I do use a lot of paper, but I use a lot of MDF boards. I use a lot right. of panels. Like it, it's not just paper, like paper works out. Like we were talking before the show, a, a lot of the pieces I do, they have like this really kind of blown out splattered ink watch ink yeah. wash effect to it. And that, paper's ideal to get that effect so i'll use paper for that but even like most of my gallery pieces they're all on wood or metal are you mostly do you mostly uh deal in just original artwork or do you have you have prints for sale yeah, like that? I, I do have print like 90 percent of my income comes from original art like the actual wow. sales uh 10 i'd say comes from prints it's not like I'm I'm selling a, a ton of prints a month, and I I think you'd be pretty hard pressed to find an artist that is selling a lot of prints a month. I think a lot of people tend to inflate their numbers just to look better. Like you know, I'll have months where I sell two prints. I'll have a month like come Christmas or in around Thanksgiving if I do like a Black Friday sale. You know, I might sell a hundred prints that month, but okay. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I think that I think the people that that do well with prints are more like the screen print stuff, like the Mondo people and everything. Because I think I think the the collectors and that they actually look at the print as actually more of a work of art because it is screen printed and the, everything that goes behind that. So because I know I know they have like release things where they're just gone as soon as they release them, and there's people lining up, you know, fighting online to get you know. To get, to get right at the right time where they can purchase that stuff. But beyond that, yeah, I don't know. It seems like unless you're at a, unless you're at like a, unless you're doing cons and stuff like that, but I assume you don't do much of that. No, I, I really have no interest in. Yeah. I don't blame you <laughs> at all. And <laughs> like for a while there, I was really kind of gung ho on doing them. Cause, and again, it, it's one of those things where you're watching YouTube videos, you're listening to other artists talk about cons and like, Oh, you know, we're making money hand over fist and I'm making X amount every weekend when I do a con. You're like, all right, sounds like something I want to do. And then you, I go check out a con and I'm thinking, you're not making that kind of money. Like, it, it's just not possible. Not to say that some people aren't. Yeah. Sure, there are people that make a lot of good money, but 
just walking around the average con, I'm thinking, you know what, for two days, three days to sit there, those kind of hours under those conditions, I'd make more money just sitting in my studio doing a painting. That's that's the realization that I came to. That especially, and it's not only those two days. At least for me, it was all the preparation going. Like, I mean, sometimes I would spend a week, maybe more. Be, you know, yeah, it's an planning everything out, yeah. out. And and this is just for. I was just doing local stuff. I mean, if yeah. I was doing traveling shows and stuff, so I kind of switched my focus to like I do. I mean, I do. One thing that I'm really trying to work on is being a little more social and stuff. So I do miss the interaction with getting out, talking to people and stuff like that. But I'm kind of getting that from like design conferences and stuff now going, you know, meeting pe people and listening to speakers and kind of, you know, just more business related, that type type of thing. So so I kind of get that from there. I, I, I miss kind of meeting some of the, the people, um, you know, that were at cons and stuff. That was always kind of cool, you know. Um, but the other thing that I'm doing is like what I was talking about when I'm doing this weekend is I'll, I'm doing these store signings and stuff and they do, you know, I mean, I, I think, you know, I think I could probably do, they're, 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 they're few and far between. I don't do tons of them. So, I mean, I, I think I've always doing one every week. It probably it wouldn't be worth it, but I get a chance to meet people and it's, you know, it's like, I do a decent amount of commissions and that's the only time really I do commissions. I don't yeah. really, because it's it's different than like I don't know if you consider the original stuff you do as commissions, but in the comic book world, commissions usually don't pay a lot. So I don't mind doing it with a at a store, you know, and you know it'll add it for a day's work. It's like I'll go in there and I'll you know I can make a couple hundred bucks or something, and, mm -hmm. and I get to to meet people and stuff. But they they don't pay a lot, so I don't uh, you know I've had people say, well, can you can you do a commission for me like away from the store? And I don't really do that. Um, because if I'm at my studio, like I can make more money doing other stuff. Um, but it is kind of, I do like doing that. And, uh, and now I'm talking to, and we'll get into, I want to get into some of the comic book, uh, you know, stuff that you're doing some covers and stuff, but, um, but I know, uh, my comic book store owner, and I don't know how many, how many comic stores do this, but, uh, they've got, you know, they've got all these variant covers. I know you've got, you've done some variant covers for dynamite and everything, but I guess now, um, a a comic store can petition a company um or i don't know i don't know exact channels you go through but basically i know my comic book store if there's a new hot title coming out they can say we've got an artist we want this artist to do an exclusive just for our store yeah the store it's, exclusive the store is, exclusive so yeah, they that's can what talk. i'm doing that's okay good. yeah that's so they they've been talking to me about doing that too as well and they've done it with and you artists. absolutely should jump all over it like, okay okay uh because like with the when you're doing a store exclusive cover like even for me doing vampirella and red sonia like that still it's sold exclusively through the store but it's still property of dynamite i still have to go through dynamite like now i'm in contact with all the dynamite like the publishers like they're just selling the comic, but you're dealing with you're dealing with the comic publisher. Yeah, I know they have to okay it and everything because I've talked to one of the other artists who have who've done some some uh, some some of those uh, exclusive store covers, and they've you know they've had to get it approved and everything like that. So yeah, so it's an excellent doing that. But. Yeah, it's a great foot in the door, dude. And like I say, like with me, I, I was very fortunate where Dynamite does a lot of promotion for me, like whether it be on the web or Facebook or Instagram, whatever. Like even the the issue number one of uh, Vampirella Red Sonia new series that just came out a couple months back. I did the first cover for it, and I had the original painting because they they just buy the rights to use the artwork to publish the artwork. Like I get to keep the original yeah. and do what I want with it. So I wanted to sell it, framed it, had it up for put it up on Instagram and on my web store for sale, and then Dynamite shared the post. On their page and i mean gone like yeah two minutes do, gone. Do, do you uh do you uh put a premium on artwork that you create that has been in print or something like that or how do you no no I, I i price it like i would any other painting okay, okay. the only bonus you got with that is that you got a signed issue of the comic <laughs> right right okay okay so yeah i don't charge more for it yeah like, just anything, like, with the comic covers like um 
I, I, I don't know what interior pages pay. Like I, I hear a lot of back and forth of the pay is good, the pay is not good. Mm. I can tell you for cover work, the pay is very good. Okay. Like you, you get very well compensated for what you do. Plus, like you're really making double the money. Like I get paid very well to do the the cover for them to publish, and then for me to sell the original, I'm getting paid twice, and then I can I still have ownership of that artwork. I can sell as many prints as I want. Okay. To the day I die, like even, even if it's a licensed product, there's no issues there. Do you kind no. of do, does it does it fall under is it is it fall under f fan art or because you officially did it for the licensor that it that it's totally legit? no because they're buying the rights to publish like it's a licensing fee really that they're paying for right okay when they print it so that artwork is mine like it doesn't mean I get to go out and do you know, a hundred different versions of Vampirella and, and sell them. Right. Because but that, that, that one in particular is totally official and everything like that. Because, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of cool. So there's a sort of bonus there. Um, so that's cool. And uh, so you, so far you've just, have you just worked for dynamite then doing these covers or? Yeah. Uh, so far just for dynamite. I, I was asked to do GI Joe for IDW and I, I, I said no, and it's not that I have anything against GI Joe. It's just my I didn't. It's not in my wheelhouse. Like what right. I my type of work. They wanted me to do a Baroness cover, and I was just like, yeah, not my thing. And right. that was fine. It was mutual. But there is a DC title that I might be working on soon, which I'm not going to say anything about. But. Uh, I'll mention something, and I don't know because I, I and you don't have to if it's if it's NDA or something like that. You don't have to say anything. But I know I know they just put a new line out. I just got like a they were at my comic store gave me this uh, like a free copy of uh, I guess Joe Hill who is um, he did Lock and Key and and he's um, he's uh, Stephen King's son, um, yeah. but he goes under his own name. You know, kind of wants to make his own way, and I guess he has. But he's got his own line of like horror comics through DC now called Hill House. Um, and I could see stuff that you do perfect for that if they end up doing any kind of, um, uh, you know, alternative covers or variant covers or anything like that. So yeah. so I don't know. So you, you said the ones that you're doing are store exclusive too. So are you working with a comic shop? Because it's yeah. like, it seems like the comic store I I go to that's doing these, they have they just approach different because they've done some image titles and some different things. So it seems like they they know the channels you go through to get these things done. So it seems like it would open it. So if you're actually working with the store instead of one just comic company, that that would open up some other avenues. If that's, you know, if that's kind of something you want to keep pursuing is doing these comic covers. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Like, uh, jump all over it. Like, honestly, do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it doesn't matter what publisher you're going to be, you can think of. If they deal with them, that means an opportunity for you to work with them in the future if they like what you do. You know? Yeah, yeah. And because, I mean, I, I love doing sequ sequential art, but like like you were talking, some of the feedback that you get, um, even for like the big two, they don't, they just don't pay a whole lot. So, um, and it, again, there's, there's people like if you're like, um, you know, if you're Greg Capullo or somebody like that, I mean, there's definitely people that are on another level that get paid very well, but for the most, even Marvel and DC titles don't pay a lot for the amount of work that goes into sequential art. So to me, if I'm going to do that, I kind of just want to work on something I own. So, I mean, that's what I do with my own, you know, my own comics and stuff, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind doing more, um, doing covers for people. So, and it looks like, like I'll have that opportunity. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. Like I say, like I have no problem doing the covers as long as it, it fits into my style. Like when I was approached to do it, do the Vampirella, like, for me, that was just an automatic yes. It's like, yeah, like, A, I know the character, but yeah. B, like, with my style of artwork, it's like, oh, yeah, perfect. Like, absolutely, you know? Yeah. So I'm anxious to see. So, yeah, if I'm hoping that you'll, you know, because I don't, some of these store exclusives, because they charge, they charge a premium for these store exclusives. Because, yeah, it's kind of like, because <laughs> the first one I did, uh, the first Vampirella cover I did, like, I think, 
the comic itself, like through the stores, like it was available through Frankie's Comics and Golden Apple Comics in California. And I think they were charging just for the uh, the Virgin cover. It was 15 bucks. And it was coming out, like whatever day it was, it was a Saturday at 2 o'clock. It was going to go on sale. And I got a message, I think it was like 20 after 2 from the owner, Kevin. And he's like, holy shit, it's sold out. I was like, excuse me? He's like, yeah. It, like apparently in nine minutes, the whole run was gone. I was like, holy shit. And then... Just out of curiosity, I was screwing around on eBay about a week later, and all those issues were going for like 180 bucks, 200 bucks yeah. on eBay. I couldn't believe it. I was like, "You got to be joking me, man! That's insane." Yeah, because I mean, that's how that's how my comic store that's that's kind of their bread and butter is that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, which I'm kind of iffy about the whole whole you know variant thing as far as because I just don't know. I don't know as far as uh, the longevity of that stuff. I mean, I, I just think there's a lot of other things that the comic industry needs to do that, you know, I think this is this, uh, the, uh, these variant covers, because we've kind of dealt with those before. Not that I'm going to turn, turn down the work, but, but I think there's some other stuff that, that, you know, the comic industry could do to, kind of, you, know, you know. Oh, absolutely. Uh, like uh, I, I know the comic book world's kind of, they've had their ups and downs and it seems like it's a lot of turmoil right now, but yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm not involved in those politics. At no, all. I'm not either. I'm not either. I it's have not. absolutely zero stake in the game. Like for me doing covers, if you had asked me a year ago, are you going to be doing comic covers? I'd be like, Oh hell no, like yeah. never going to happen. Not my thing, but I'm doing it. I'm happy with it. It's good money right now. So, to me, that's all it is. Yeah, and I'm and not trying to insult the comic industry by saying that, but it, it's it's decent money when I get to do it. I'm doing artwork that I like to do, so I have no problem with it. Yeah, yeah, and I, I can see there's just so many titles out there that I just think would you know um, would just benefit from from your your artwork. Um, and I think I think once people start, you know, I don't know as far as in the comic. I mean, are you are you do people know who you are in the comic space yet? Because if they don't, uh, I think they are very quickly, Yeah. Yeah. A couple of months ago, I, I think most comic collectors didn't have a clue who I was, but yeah. my name's getting tossed around. And that's pretty. a whole other, you know, and that's a whole other avenue that's going to help grow your audience and everything. So. Yeah, um, exactly. Like I've actually, I, I've gotten a, a few more collectors and commissions out of it since I've been doing it. Like, high dollar yeah commissions out of it which i'm very happy about so yeah and i know i mean i know just from going i mean there's 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 one guy every time i go to um do these store signings i mean he has me do like three different commissions and stuff so i mean there's people out there that do you know just they just art collectors and, and especially in the comic space so um yeah i think that's gonna be pretty cool i just wanted to bring this up um yeah. So Jeff, Jeff says, congrats on picking up the cover work. So uh, just to let everyone know how far back we go, um, before the art casters that we're doing, uh, we, uh, Jay, uh, Jeff Lafferty, and myself uh, on, on uh, Jeff's channel, um, he had a thing called the art cast. He still does the art cast, but it was kind of a precursor to this show. And when we, start, when we started this show with Jeff and with... Um, with Kevin Cross and it's changed quite a bit from there, but yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of a throwback to the past, man. That's yeah. Cool. It's a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let's see. So we've, we've kind of, we've, we've talked about, we talked about like comics and then you had mentioned, so the, 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 the clothing brand, you're involved in a clothing brand as well now, right? Is yes. that a clothing brand or is it? Yeah, it, it, it's mainly a, a clothing brand, Sullen Art Collect. Oh, okay, and I'm sure a lot of people know, but I know, I, I, I know, is it because I know my friend Corey, who we do the art check with, I know he's, I think he's got a Harley and everything, so he's probably, I'm guessing you might be familiar with them. Well, I'm sure he knows it very yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. So, but um, so what? So you released? You said one shirt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the first time I, I've, I've worked with them, so yeah. It, did one shirt design for their fall collection that just came out 
I think it's about a month ago, and it's been doing really well. And again, so what, what's the subject matter for that? I'm just curious. Uh, it, it's very. Uh, their whole clothing line is very tattoo based. Okay. Um, more along the lines of what I do, like very dark art kind of tattoo based. So the design I did for them is a like their logo is a skull. So they had asked me to do like just my own version of a sullen skull, like what I would want it to look like. And that's exactly what I did. Just really blown out, creepy looking skull. And they, they put the sullen logo on the forehead of it and put it on a shirt. All right. That's cool. That's and it's cool. really cool. Like to actually, cause I mean, I, I, I bought, I don't know how many shirts from them over the years and to actually have one with my painting on it. You're like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, well, what's what's really cool is that um, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, you've you've got such a huge body of work, but it sounds like I mean, you're just now getting into the comic covers. You're just now getting involved with the sullen thing. So, what's kind of crazy? I mean, this can't this can't go anywhere but up. And I'm sure, I mean, I can't uh, oh, see yeah. more comic covers, more you know, more uh, apparel and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool, but I'm I'm actually a little surprised that you you haven't at least the apparel stuff. I mean, or maybe you, maybe it's just this company that's a little bigger than some of the. Have you done a lot of apparel apparel in the past, or is it just zero? See, this that's kind of I mean, and one of the one of the other things that kind of surprises me is that, um, and you must work really fast <laughs> because you do ninety yeah. percent of your work is originals. I mean, and I'm just wondering how sustainable that is. I mean, because you only have so many hours in a day to paint originals. And I mean, obviously, I mean, as you the popularity goes up, you can charge more and everything like that. So I'm sure there's a decent income from that. But it just seems like if if you can mass produce more of your artwork, I mean, that just seems like that's just a, 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 a wider range, of, you know, a bigger income stream that you can get from that. I mean, is that kind of something you're considering then? Or is it? Or do you just love, or do you just love, you know, doing originals? Is that just, you know, I, I it's not like I have any kind of like master plan, right? Um, I I just love doing, I I just love painting like that, you know. I I, I paint every day as long yeah. as I can paint, and you know, if I can get more work on merchandise supplemental kind of income great uh, i don't search it out right I don't go out of my way to do it um say every, everything i've done is really kind of i shouldn't say everything i've done but working with certain you know these companies and getting into comic books and everything along those lines even getting into galleries period like i never i never really actively sought it out it just kind of fell on my head well, that's kind of what i was talking about where you're, you're when your work's at a certain level i mean it's just like you can be and it's like but i i mean i kind of always have to i mean it's you might not be the best example for people who are trying to learn marketing because it's like hey just create the best work in the world and people will find you um yeah but, but that's not i i know what you're saying and i i, I appreciate the compliments but that that's not really the whole thing of it either though like um regardless of whether your work is good or not, like it's a matter of being like, when I say things fall on my head, like I, I shouldn't say like literally like out of the blue sky, a piano landed on me full of right. gold points. Like that's just not how it works. Um, it's just that I, I've never, I, I, I never went to a comic company saying, I want to do a, I want to do a cover. I want to get published. I never went to a gallery saying, I want to be hanging on your walls, but, I, I've always wanted to be in a gallery and I never actively sought out to do a comic book cover, but it's something I never would have turned down. Like even 20 years ago, if I was approached for it, I would have done it, but it's a matter of everything that I do. Uh, again, I'm trying to cater to a certain audience and even like, even with the comics, like I was approached for that because they saw, and he was very upfront with me too. Like, he wanted me to do Vampirella because he's like, you can, 
he's like, I want your Vampirella. He's like, right. your stuff is like so dark and so macabre. He's like, it'd be something that nobody's ever seen before. It's like they wanted something really new and fresh. But he was actively, again, seeking out like what I do with like the really kind of dark occult kind of kind of look to it. And just by marketing my work to that audience, that's how I got contacted to do the comic books. That's how I got contacted to be in the galleries. Yeah. And it's kind of, I mean, that's the other thing that I talk about too, is that, you know, you do the work that you want to do. I mean, put out the work that, I mean, like you said, you kind of turned down that Baroness cover because it just kind of wasn't really your thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, you're at a point right now where, where you're getting approached to do the work that you want to do. And that's kind of, that's kind of what I'm sort of moving towards too, because I'm trying to get away from doing client work. Although I, I would say that, you know, if somebody come and I've told people this too, I, cause I've had people approach me with comment. I'm cause in trying to get away from that, I've had people ask if I, if I do client work or whatever. And then I'll, I kind of tell them, I said, it, it really depends. I mean, if, if you want me to do the kind of thing that I do, you know, if I want me to do giant robots or, you know, that kind of stuff, then, then yeah, I will consider it. But, um, but I, I don't want to just do any old thing, you know? So, um, but yeah, I mean, if, but I've seen, you know, a lot, if, if you're creating, if you're creating a certain body of work and everything, and you know when people see that that's the kind of stuff they want you to do and every once in somebody will come by and want you to do something a little different but you know having that ability to turn that down and say no and say no this is this is kind of the, the work that i like to do um that's that's got to be a pretty cool position to be in yeah i mean like i turn down a lot of work a lot like it's kind of weird like well, i'm sure you get the same thing i'm sure every artist out there gets the same thing like you have your body of work that most anybody could find very easily or even getting con like the best is when I get a message through Instagram, like, Oh, I've been looking at your work. I've been following you and I love what you do. Could you draw me as a King riding the back of a, a dragon? And I want a sword in one hand. <laughs> I'm kind of like, you follow my work? I, no, no, no. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Like I get some really off the wall requests and you're, you're just thinking like, hell no, man. Like that, what in God's name would make you think I would want to paint that? Like, I don't need the money that bad. Yeah. 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 So, so Corey, who we do the 48 hour art check with says he never gets sick of skulls. Now I know that was one of your, one of your things that you always used to say is that you were just tired of drawing skulls. Now, maybe since you've moved away from motorcycles, Maybe you don't have to do as many skulls now, um, but you do some kick-ass skulls. So I don't know. Have you? Have you? Thank you. Have no, you I, I, I've. Uh, <laughs> I, I was sick of painting skulls on motorcycles. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you. You remember back in the day on a couple of streams, it's like I, I wasn't painting a skull. It's like I had to paint, <laughs> like working on a chopper. I had to do like 280 skulls on it. And you're, you're like, after skull 99, it really kind of loses the appeal. You're like, Oh God, I don't want to finish this. But yeah, now I, if I do a skull, it's just one nice skull. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of what I figured, but that's, that's kind of cool that you, you kind of have moved away from that. It's probably, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I mean, I just, like I've been doing some more mobile stuff. I got like an iPad pro and I've been doing some digital stuff. And I'll go to a coffee shop or something sometimes, but I, I just like to be in my studio. I like to have all my stuff here. And, you know, and I don't know, I guess, I don't know if you still did. I don't know what exactly what your ship setup was before, but if you, if, if it was sort of like a shop setup where people could bring a bike by back then and you paint that, or if it's, or if you had to, I don't know how that worked. If you had to go out to places and, and, and do the painting on site or, or how that worked, but um, now that you're just doing more of the fine art stuff, it seems like it seems like you can kind of work a little more on your own uh, terms. Yeah, but, definitely. Like uh, I had half a lifetime of doing a lot of traveling and back and forth. Like yeah. whether it was at my studio or the body shop, or having to do work on site at another shop, or you know what have you. But now it's just the comfort of my studio. Yeah, my chair is yeah. gotten very very comfortable. Yeah, I, I I know what you mean. Yeah. 
I like that. It's nice too, because I mean, now like you know, you wake up in the morning. I have my coffee, put on some music, start painting, and next thing you know, it's midnight. Like, yeah, <laughs> not having to run around like the the amount of work that I can get done in a day is, is like it surprises me sometimes how much stuff I can get done. Yeah, you must. I mean, I'm I'm curious. So with the with the original with the original paintings. Do you have, I mean, what's, what's like, is there like a huge waiting list or what, what does that look like for a customer who wants to commission you to do something? Um, it kind of varies by the time of the year. Like right now, commission lists, I think it's about, you're looking at about six, seven months. Okay. Great. Commission a painting. And it, it's not to say that I'm solidly booked with commissions going on that far down the line it, I like to give myself a lot of wiggle room like X amount of space so I can do so many original works like of my own to sell like right. I only yeah. have works that I can just sell on a regular basis I try to build up a small body of work that I can have to decide for a gallery show should that come up and then I also have to keep kind of an open a lot of open time just like with the comic covers the one thing i have learned very quickly is that it's a very tight deadline to do it they don't give you a lot of leeway so when they say can you do a cover like you basically got about a week yeah, yeah. to do it so i i'd like to have that wiggle room without pissing off other customers saying oh your stuff's going to be late because this thing just came in and they're more important to me than you are i never want to have to do that yeah, and that's smart. I mean, obviously, I mean, you, you need to be able to know how to, you know, how to handle all that stuff. And and that's another thing that, you know, went back to what we were talking about before, where you said that kind of things just kind of came to you after creating the work. But you but you have to you have to be able to organize that. You have to, you know, you have to know how to run a business. I mean, you've been doing this since I mean I mean you started nineteen ninety four. And you've been pretty much freelance your whole life or your whole working life right for the yeah since i've been 20 years old man yeah that's pretty awesome that's 25 awesome. years yeah i wish i could say the same i've been kind of back and forth a little freelance here a little part-time job doing graphic design while doing freelance there and it's just been up and down but but yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty awesome yeah like there's a whole spectrum of things you got to do like i mean a being able to organize your time is key and <laughs> that that applies to what I'm doing now. And that applied to me when I was doing bikes. It applied to me when I very st first started out and I was doing t-shirts at the, the, the weekend fairs. Like you have to be able to organize your time, marketing yourself to the right people, and then really taking care of your client base. Yeah. No yeah. matter what, like a, a collector messages me at two o'clock in the morning and I got collectors in Germany, like they're on a way different timetable than I am. Like I'll get messages at three o'clock in the morning. You know what? I wake up and I answer. That's wow. Well, that's pretty hardcore. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I don't leave it to I, the I, next I day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If somebody's yeah. willing to spend, you know, a couple thousand dollars on your work, you don't leave them, you know, sitting and waiting for a reply. Like you get back to them real fast. Yeah, like, but you don't you don't think that that they would be understanding with the with the time <laughs> difference. Well, I mean, it, it, I mean, it I pretty, I, I get to myself pretty you know pretty attentive to you know getting back to people and everything, but that's 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 above me. Yeah, I mean, for the most that's part, I'm a late sleeper, but yeah, there's nights my phone will go ding at four o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh fuck this, and I just yeah. throw it against the bed and go back. Yeah, to sleep. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you. you Take care of your customers. If they contact you with a question, get back to them as soon as you can. And yeah. you got to let them know, like, yeah, you're absolutely my number one priority. Like every customer needs to be your number one priority and treat them like you're, they're the number one priority. Take care of them. Like you buy a painting from me, I ship you that painting, but I always throw extra prints in that package, uh, handwritten thank you note maybe a couple of sketches because I had time or I have some kicking around. You know, you order a print, you never get one print. You'll get two, three prints. Yeah. Yeah. No, I do the same thing. So I mean, it's house, like at Christmas, like I have all my, every, everybody that's bought an original piece of work and whether that's from me 
or from a gallery, even if it's from the gallery, I'll contact the gallery and say, give me the, uh, give me the names and addresses of everybody that bought pieces from the show. Let me know what piece they bought just so I know. I have that all on a list, you know, come Christmas time, they all get an exclusive print that I make just for them. Handwritten note saying happy holidays, what have you. Like just, you gotta let people know that you actually give a shit about them and you really appreciate the business that they give you. Yeah, yeah. And it comes back in spades, it really does. Yeah, and I do the same, so I mean, at least I'm doing the right thing it sounds like, because uh, oh, yeah. you're, you're killing it with that. So uh, I've got, so I'm curious kind of what, what's kind of the, the as far as your commission work, what, what are kind of the big requests that you get as far as subject matter and then after that i kind of want to know on your personal product what do you kind of what do you gravitate to the most if there's something that's specific or is it all the same i mean is it because i know you do a lot of figures female figures you yeah should, you know yeah I, i'm kind of i'm very fortunate in the fact that most of my commissions and what the thing i like to paint the most like just for myself period is really gothic looking women yeah i'm just kind of obsessed with it for whatever reason and most of my commissions end up being that the majority of them i a lot of people want their wives painted their girlfriends painted i've even i've done a portrait of somebody's dead mother in that kind of fashion yeah so, yeah so do you as far as uh what do you, i assume you use models right 99 percent of the time yeah yeah so do you do you have do you hire models you, you said some people have send you photographs of of well if it's a commission or, it, yeah depending i mean do you have to do a whole like studio because i mean yours are pretty i mean so like just take for instance the 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 red sonia um vampirella cover did yeah. you have to set up i mean do you have to do you have to like hire models to get in those the, the poses no that like that, that was actually just uh gathering a lot of reference and okay. taking bits and pieces okay a, a lot of pieces I'll, I'll just like i you know i'm like anybody else i got file folders on my computer of just right. reference shots of the human anatomy and i'll take bits and pieces and put together a sketch and then start painting it um for commissions you know if somebody wants their wife or girlfriend you know obviously they're sending me a picture of their right. wife and their girlfriend and again i've been really like super fortunate like i get contacted all the time by people wanting to model for my paintings like even like with the vampirella series like uh very famous cosplayer ireland reed um i'm doing i i did her for the first vampirella cover i just finished another painting with her and she's going to be doing modeling a red Sonya for me coming up in the new year that I have to do a lot of cosplayers have contact me and say, Hey, you know, if you ever need a model, give me a show. And then true to like on Instagram, like a lot of people that I'm friendly with, um, I'll just send them a message and just say, Hey, you know what, would you mind posing for a painting for me? And they'll nine times out of 10, they're, they're all for it. That's awesome. And then they, I, maybe they get a print or something, or how? To, yeah, how to, that like I'll, I'll say like even like with this gallery show, uh, one very really popular makeup artist, uh, Ellie Cat on Instagram, Ellie Goodroad. You know, I I just hit her up and said, you know what, like she has a very unique look to her. I'm like, I would love to paint you for this show. Would you mind doing some makeup and taking some pictures and sending them to me? She's like, yeah, no problem. Took her a couple of weeks. She did it. And in return, I'm just I'm giving her a bunch of prints of the painting. Like, you know, take one for yourself, sell the other ones, like whatever you want. You know? Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So, so, so the the personal the if you if you uh, commissions aside and everything, uh, when you when you decide you're going to do a, a personal project, um, what I mean. What what do you? I mean, you've already kind of established that you like kind of the gothic, gothic like figure drawing and stuff like that. Um, 
is that kind of just your go-to or you know is it is there technique i know i've noticed back from you know it seems more some of your more recent work there's there's i hesitate to say spatter because that's kind of got a bad um sometimes it's got a bad connotation but what is the technique that you use and kind of you know you see the airbrush which i totally understand but then it looks like i don't know are you, are you, is that airbrush too or is that like a watercolor is it a wash yeah it's it's a wash like uh basically a, what you're talking about is if i'm doing a skull or even a portrait yeah for that matter it's really super detailed like in the focused area like the face yeah. and then it just kind of blows out and that that's all just ink washes that i'm doing really loose with a brush and I'll do all that first and then I'll come in with the airbrush and tighten it up and make it look like super realistic. Oh, so that's like, interesting. I, I would have thought that it would have been the other way around, but, but yeah, yeah, actually if you, I was live streaming on Instagram today doing a skull just like that. It's still on there cause it, it saves for 24 hours on my story. If you oh, watch yeah. It. I got to check out your stories then. Cause yeah, like you almost get to see the whole thing. So yeah. Cause that's one thing I miss from you being on YouTube is, is, you know, some of the process videos and stuff watching. That. Yeah. I just, the, <laughs> I kind of fell out of love with YouTube. I, I really did. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I dig it, but it's, but I, I can see it's like, yeah, it's, it's, and, and you gotta, you gotta kind of go with what, what's working for you and Instagram. It seems like you're knocking out the park with Instagram, but I gotta, I gotta pay, I, I gotta pay more attention to the stories. Cause I just kind of look through the feed for the most part. If I'm, if I'm looking at Instagram, but I gotta look at the stories too as well. Yeah. Like I, I really, I, I do all my live streams on Instagram and I like it for the fact that, you know, saves for 24 hours and then they're gone. Like, yeah, to me, there's a mystery about it. Cause then, you know, like when you get a notification saying, you know, like, so and so's live. It's like, oh shit! I I gotta watch this, or it's gonna yeah. be gone. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I like that. Like, cause I'll like even today, like I had posted on Facebook. You know, like I'll, I'll be live streaming in twenty minutes on Instagram, and people start freaking out. They're messaging me like, "What the hell's your Instagram handle? I don't know it." Like, <laughs> well, if you miss it, you miss it. You know. So so. I mean, you're, so we, we've talked about how you're kind of getting into doing the comic covers and uh, the the apparel and stuff like that. Uh, and you also said that you don't really, you're not really planning, you know, it, it, you just kind of, it seems like you kind of go where your stuff takes you. Um, I mean, what do you, what do you kind of see the future? What do you want to be doing um, with your art? Anything different? Or are you just going to continue kind of, you know, uh, wave or? I mean, you've talked you've talked before about a book, and it sounds like it that keeps getting pushed out a little bit. Yeah, um, like, goal of yours, or? I I really do want to do a book. I really really do. With me, the big hurdle, like you know, I'm in Canada. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. A lot of people it. don't know that, but uh, it, yeah, the logistics of it, like, it, there's got to be, but I there's got to be a way, even if, even I mean, if you're so. Let's say let's basically say, it's going to come down to if I got to do a book, I'm going to have to find a fulfillment center in the states. Yeah, that's what I was going right to say. Yeah, biggest, yeah, I mean, if mm -hmm. your biggest like uh, customer base is in the states, then you probably have to have it produced here or something. But there's got to, yeah, I don't know. There's got to be a way to do that. But yeah, like uh, it, it would have to go get shipped to the states, and even like I got a lot of people overseas so, that buy and stuff, but shipping from canada again like for me to ship to europe and for you to ship to europe i'm paying double what you are if not triple oh, okay okay now okay this is something i heard about and i don't i i, I i'm going to speak to it even though i'm not too familiar with it but i somebody was and i think they were canadian but they were talking about a service where um it's it's basically some kind of shipping company, and they, ba they basically, I guess, they just haul their stuff to the states and then from Canada and ship it out. Do you, are you familiar with that? Yeah, it, it's called. Uh, oh shit! If you say it, it'll it'll ring a bell. Shit chats, I think it's called. Yeah, that might. Be, that, yeah, that might be there's right. actually there's more than one company that does okay. that, but Chit Chats is the big one. But 
they all have a lot of restrictions to them like the amount like because again it, it does have to clear customs to get into the u.s and right there i think with them the maximum dollar value is 800 i think 800 canadian okay. depending on the carrier like one's 800 i know another one it's 700 like that's the most that you can that they'll take over the border and for me well books would be one thing but like for paintings and whatnot like that that's not going to cut it like, yeah saucer says it's called chit chats i i, yeah. I can't remember if, i think i think sasha might be canadian i'm not sure he might have to remind me but even like like for me again back to the book, like the problem with the book like for me to ship it for me to ship it out that that's not the end of the world like you know i gotta charge a little more for shipping most of my customers are used to that they, they know i'm in canada they know the shipping costs more but for me to get the book printed like i get it printed overseas or in the states whatever like if you get a pallet of books delivered to you let's say they're going to charge you 100 bucks for shipping right to bring it to your door i get a pallet of books printed and shipped to me they're going to charge me seven thousand dollars Seven thousand versus two. Wow. Because it has to be international shipping, and then I got to pay duties, taxes, and brokerage fees on top of that. Wow! Because anything like in the states, uh, you're allowed to get so much delivered to you without uh, like an X amount of dollar value without having to pay import duties or taxes or whatever. In Canada, anything over twenty dollars, you have to pay a brokerage fee, duties, taxes, and the more expensive the item is the more those taxes cost. Wow. Like if I order like an airbrush part from California, a $20 airbrush part, if they send it UPS or Pure Later or FedEx, it, that $20 part will end up costing me 120 bucks by the time it gets to my door. Huh. I mean, aren't, aren't I know we're... <laughs> it's so, yeah. It seems like aren't there company like printing companies that have offices in Canada and in, in the U S where you could get, you could get books produced for your Canadian, the Canadian market in Canada. And also I've been looking and I actually, I, I've been looking hard and a couple of months ago, or maybe it was last year. I actually, I had put out an open call on Facebook to anybody like, yeah. Can somebody help me out tracking down a lead on this? And I came up with nothing really man that's and that, if anybody out there listening to this watching this if you know something that i don't hit me up please that's yeah, i would really like to put out a book and but again it, it's not that it can't be done it's yeah. just a convenience factor i'll have to if i can get it printed in the states sent to a fulfillment center in the states it's just a matter of as long as I know all the books are there and in good shape, taking a flight down, you know, spend a weekend signing all the books and then fly back home. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's the one thing, like it, it's kind of a given, like there's no way in hell I'm going to, I'm going to sell a book to somebody and not have it signed. Like, have great. you ever, have you ever been, I mean, assume, I assume you're talking about self publishing. I was just curious if you've ever been approached by, uh, by, by a publisher wanted to do a book with you. Um, there was a european publisher we've had a couple of conversations but it really hasn't gone very far not to say that it won't happen but it's not happening very fast yeah anyway. so what what would you want your book to be like because i know i've got a vision of a book that i want to do eventually which will just be like It'll be sectioned off into robots, alien zombies, and then, you know, other imminent threats to humanity. And those would be the sections. But I want to, I kind of wanted to have it like it's uh, just, I, I don't know, I got a vision in my head where it's just all kind of pieced. And it, it's like basically behind the scenes of the scientist's lair and all that kind of stuff. So I've got, I've got an idea, but I'm just curious if you have anything in vision, if there, if there would be any, I don't know if there might be any copy along with it. Like, if yeah, yeah. Any, like, but he writes stories or anything that go along with the pieces or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I don't really have like a like a really solid idea, like this is what it's gonna be, but yeah. I do kind of vision it like just a collection. Of, I, I want it just to be a span of works, like say 10 years worth of work. And I want there to be a lot of 
like have the finished piece and a couple of them i want to have like the really rough sketch shown alongside the piece like maybe one page is the sketch one page is the piece and i do want to have a lot of text in there like i'd like to have kind of every with every painting there'd be like one page of text one page of art just because i'd like to tell a little story with every single yeah. thing that's in there yeah you know kind of kind of like a yeah like a fantasy book almost you know like just a little tale to go with every single piece of art i think that'd be pretty cool yeah man i, ho I hope it happens because i mean and i just again this is it's just another uh, it's just another one of those avenues of, of another income stream assuming that you can you know <laughs> get around all the problems with the shipping and everything but yeah um, yeah like even for a while I, I was even considering going like the amazon route because i know you can you can publish books and they'll they'll sell them they'll ship them and i'm sure i could fly down there and sign them but then i was thinking i don't really want my book to be on amazon yeah yeah i mean it just doesn't belong think, there in my head yeah and i if, if one part of me when you said that immediately i was kind of thinking well a lot of your work's black and white it could, could probably have done like a because you can do the print on demand black and white it's usually cost effective but i don't know i think your work is just i don't know i think i i don't think it would benefit from a, a print on demand i think it really needs to be super high quality and everything like that so yeah like i'd have to get a skit of books pay yeah. out and get really yeah really nice printed books yeah not that, I mean, I, I mean, I know, I, th I think Jeff uh, did a, he a book through print on demand and his stuff looked good, but, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's hard to say. So, um, but man, I hope, hope, hope you figure it out. Cause I really, I mean, it would be awesome to, to have a book of your art. And I, I think it would just be a, you know, just a constant, you know, you, you said that kind of, you know, I'm still kind of surprised that I guess prints aren't, as big as like the, you know, as far as, of course, I mean, obviously you can charge a premium for the original stuff, but it just seems like, it seems, it seems like there's gotta be, you know, I could just, not that you want to throw your artwork on everything, but th certain things like t-shirts and all that, and, and, you know, comic covers and things like that. It just seems like there's, you know, so many more opportunities for your artwork and stuff like that. So. Yeah. I know. I know what you're saying. Like, it'd be nice if they kind of have like a, constant stream of money coming in from something but uh yeah. i don't know like it for me i'm kind of it'd be nice if there was but i don't want to like i don't want to have the jay ferguson t-shirt line I, right. I don't want that. yeah i don't know i kind of just even going back to the motorcycle days just because that was really kind of an underground art form and even with what i'm doing now like yeah i make a good living at it and i'm, I'm somewhat popular within the community but a lot of people still don't know who i am and it, it's still like the whole dark art community it's still really like an underground kind of thing and i'm happy with that like i kind of dig it the fact that i'm not like my artwork isn't in your face unless you're at the comic store like, right and, and I'm not in a real big, big rush to change that. Like, I, I kind of like being a little bit underground. And then when, you know, when I do have something come out, like Sullen or uh, I have a new comic cover coming out, I can make a little announcement saying, hey, guess what? Like, I got this cool thing coming out this weekend and people can get kind of hyped up for it because it's not every day that it happens. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I get that. I get that. Um all right let's so we're, we're getting we're getting close to the hour and a half mark so i was is there anything that you wanted to mention that we didn't talk about i know you had a lot of i mean when i kind of gave you the opportunity to come up with a topic you kind of threw a few things out there i think we covered a lot of it but i don't know if there's anything in particular that that uh that you want to talk about while we're while we're here uh not really um I, yeah we did cover a lot of stuff um if there was one point I'd, if I'd ever want to drive home a point to anybody that's watching, I, I'd just say like, no matter what, like if you want to do something, just do it. Don't let, don't let anybody uh, steer you in any, any kind of direction, like towards your heart. Like 
if you got a passion for you know, whatever it is, painting skulls, painting portraits, painting manga characters, just do it. Don't let anybody tell you differently. Like the audience is going to be there. You just got to, it might take them a while to find you, but they're there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's one of the things that, you know, in, in my marketing efforts and, um, like I, 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 I was telling you earlier, I just released this product, the comic maker toolkit. And there's a, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of digital products out there right now. There's a lot of marketplaces that sell digital products and things like that. Um, but, uh, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't really anyone doing anything in the comic space. And, and when I launched this thing, I wasn't sure how it would do because I'm like, well, maybe, you know, maybe the people on, on these marketplaces, maybe that's not something they're interested in, but then, uh, you know, it was successful. And, but I think it was because I kind of niched down into something that, that, you know, I wasn't even really sure about if there was a market for that, but there is, I mean, it, it, uh, that's a, that's the advice I would give a lot of people is that even super specific, uh, you know, things, there's a, there's a, there's a market for just about everything. Um, and sometimes it helps to kind of niche down and kind of stand out and everything like that. So, yeah. Um, yeah so, so yeah, no, so, so far it seems like it's working for me. It's definitely working, working for you. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, you know, anytime I, I see your work, it's just like, it just, you know, it's kind of awe inspiring and everything. So it's, it's like, 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 it's, like we were talking about, you sometimes you just have, you, you kind of have to put that airbrush in the picture just to let people know that it's not, it's not a photograph because you're able to capture that so well. And, um, yeah. yeah. So actually, I can show you a little yeah. sneak peek. So, oh, yeah, please do. Let's uh, see what you got going on. This will be in comic shops in January. I'm just going to show you a little bit. All right. Oh, you got to, yeah, yeah. That's a little more than a little. We pretty much see everything. <laughs> Not the whole thing, but yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so which which books do you have? Do you have uh, like comic covers out there? And is it, you said they're store exclusives, or you said they were sold out? So I guess you got to. Uh, uh, Vampirella Red Sonia Meet Betty and Veronica is sold out. Vampirella One is sold out, I believe. Vampirella and Red Sonia Number One. There's still copies available. Um, best thing to do is uh, go on to Frankie's Comics or Golden Apple Comics. Okay. If they have any, and even if they are sold out, I know they're still kicking around on eBay. Like, you're going to be paying for them, but they're on yeah. eBay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of interesting. I think they, I thought it was some, because you, you mentioned uh, Vampirella meat. Uh, meet Betty and Veronica because I think they I think one of the covers they wanted me to work on was uh, some kind of Archie tie-in or something so I'm I'll have to talk to them to, uh, Saturday when I go down there and see what they had in mind but it sounds yeah. kind of cool yeah I've got I, this is kind of a different thing but so I, I told you I was doing those uh, those on Instagram I'm doing the um, the Inktober with the white ink so they gave me this uh, this sketch cover. I don't know if you can see that. So if you do come down to Surprise Comics, there's nothing here yet. I'll let's right. see, you can see it. But there's a Ghost Rider. This is just a sketch. It's a regular like sketch cover, but it's black. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do like a white ink on there of Ghost Rider, um, and it's a wraparound. So and then I think they're gonna I think they're gonna auction that off or something at the at the thing once I complete it. So that's gonna be fun to do. Um, I've done a few sketch covers, but it's not, it's, it's kind of, it's not the same as like actual an actual official, like variant cover designs. So yeah. that'd be kind of cool, but yeah, man, it's, it's cool to kind of get you, get you uh, roped in with us in this whole comic thing, Jay. Yeah, I know who, who would have thought. Eh? <laughs> He's a comic artist now. That's pretty awesome. Cause <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much when we were hanging out. I think everyone, everyone was working on comics probably, but you. Yeah, so, I was painting motorcycles. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, you know, one way or another, we'll, we'll bring people to the comics thing, even though for most people it's not a big money earner. But but it sounds like these covers are are like a you know a good way to go. So. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Jeff says, ship all the books to Scott's house and he can send them out for you. So, there you go. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know if I want that job. But yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to let you uh, I'm going to let you promote uh, anything or talk about anything that you want to, you know, where can people find you online? Um, uh, you if anything, just uh, if they want to wait like seven months and get a commission from you or. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just uh, well, my website is jfergusonart.com and Instagram, best place to hit me up. That's I'm posting there the most and my handles uh, on the screen there somewhere right there. Right here. Yeah. 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 And uh, so awesome. And then, so like I said, as far as me, um, uh, I will be at surprise comics this weekend on Saturday from 11 to six, along with the uh, Abe Sapien, Abel Parsons, who's, who's actually in the chat right now. We both got stories in the anthology. Uh, we'll be there signing that book. Plus, you know, hollow. It's it's a Halloween thing, and you know, if you know me, I mean, I've got a comic called Young and the Dead, which is kids versus zombies. We just did the werewolves and unicorns, which is all about creatures and cryptids and stuff. So I do a lot of Halloween, you know, esque type stuff. So so I have some cool stuff there that that's good for Halloween. Come in your costume. There's free comics, um, and uh, you don't need to wear a costume to get free comics. But I think there are some other prizes and stuff you can win for that. So it should be a good time if you're in Arizona, and if you're not in Arizona. Um, check out your, whatever your local comic store is. This is uh, this is kind of like the the kind of sister event to Free Comic Book Day. So at most, I think a lot of company, a lot of comic book stores are probably participating. So definitely check it out in your area. Um, and uh, and as far as this show, the Artcasters, uh, just to let you guys know, um, uh, usually uh, I have a co-host, Josh, who is sick today, so he's not with us, but he should be back next week. Ne uh, you, a lot of times we do it on Thursday. Um, next Thursday is Halloween, so we aren't going to do it on Thursday. So we may do it on Wednesday. We're not really sure yet. But the one thing uh, I do want to say is that... Um, that if you want to know when we're going to go, when we're going to be live, and it also switches back and forth from Josh's channel to my channel. So it can get a little confusing, but if you want to make sure that you aren't confused, um, uh, you need to uh, sign up for the mailing list and we don't spam you or anything like that. We just send out a notification. And as of right now, I forgot to put that uh, that information in the description, but I'm going to go do that. So so there, there will be a link in there where you can click on that. Or if you just go to one of the older Artcasters videos, there's always a link um, where, that you can click on to uh, join our mailing list and you'll be alerted to when that happens. So um, yeah, it's great having you on again, Jay. It's been oh, thanks for having me. Long and it's great catching up and everything. So um, thanks for coming on. And and seriously, uh, do you guys, everyone, do yourself a favor and check out Jay's stuff because uh, once you see it, I mean, it's just it it really it's it's just incredible. So I mean, I can't say enough good things about it. And I, I kind of <laughs> I hate just shoveling on praise, but it's well deserved. So thank you very much. Out, Jay. Um, well, we'll see. And thanks to everyone in the chat. And uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see you guys. Uh, we'll see you guys sometime next week, probably Wednesday, but we're not sure yet. So just check in and join that mail list if you're not already on it. We'll see you guys later. later. Sometimes there's a little lag.